These angle relationships that we will talk about now are gigantic. They get used in all kinds of problems, not just right now in the current uh, situation, but will be used many, many places. So pay close attention here. This says a translation of angle ABC by vector BC. So if you take a look, vector BC is right here. And, um, and we're going to take this guy and basically slide it down. A translation will form parallel lines. So let's see how successful I am. If I take um, line BA or AB and I slide it, or the whole angle for that matter, and if I slide it on down, how am I doing, to this position basically, what it says to us is that we have created, uh, here's the original angle, obviously, and here's our image angle, and of course this angle will be identical to this one. So let's see, again, going back to what it said here in the upper right, if we do a translation by a vector BC, it will create two parallel lines. Here they are, parallel line one and parallel line number two. And angle ABC, the original one, ABC here, and the notation's not quite right because I slid it down here, but, but the new one, the image down here, will be equal to this one. These are known as, guess what, corresponding angles. This angle, when it slid down here, is a corresponding angle. And because of the isometric nature of a translation, because when we translated it down here, and because it's isometric, these things are, of course, congruent or equal to each other. So, corresponding angles are always congruent to each other. And in this diagram, there are a number of corresponding angles. Let's see if I can show you a couple. The angle that is right here would correspond with this one. The angle that is right here would correspond with this one. The angle that is right here would correspond with this one. And we already saw the other group. Um, our friend here in this corner would correspond with our friend in this corner. A couple other things you're noticing too, and you would know this, is all four of those angles basically slid down to be here. Therefore, corresponding angles are congruent. So just to recap that in a nice clean diagram, uh, we would have 1 and 5 would be known as corresponding, 3 and 7 would be no known as corresponding. Also note that those four angles are all equal. Why would they be equal? Well, if 1 and 2 are vertical, which they are, they would be equal to each other. And therefore, when they slid down here, 5 and 7 would be equal. Again, corresponding means to slide down. If I select another group, uh, 2 would slide all the way to 6, correspond, and so would 4 and 8. Again, it's kind of cool how this all works out, but uh, this group right here are all equal to this bottom group. These are known as corresponding angles that slide down the transversal. Actually, I didn't mention that this line that cuts these two uh, cuts the two parallel lines. This this guy right here is known as the transversal because things transverse it, travel along it. More angle relationships are here uh, hidden in this transversal with two parallel lines. The first group is called the alternate and interior. And there are two parts to that. Uh, interior here, of course, means that you are in the inside of the parallel line. So if you're interior, you can only really be uh, these guys here, four and three and five and six. So when we use the word interior, you're in the inside of the parallel lines. And the word alternate means you are alternating on other sides of the transversal. So who are you if you are alternates and interior. This guy's interior, this guy's interior, and they are alternating interiors. And they alternate down that main line again. Now, so is then, who else would be there 
it would be 3 and 5 are alternate and interior as well. Now the big question becomes, uh, what's their relationship? How do they relate to each other? Well, they must be equal. Let's find out why. There are different ways to show this, but let's try this. Angle 3 uh, is corresponding to angle 7, right? Those are equal. We know that those must be equal values because they're corresponding. But we also know that 5 and 7 are vertical angles, and those must be equal as well. And so using something in mathematics called the transitive property, we could say that 3 is equal to 7 corresponding, 7 is equal to 5 vertical, therefore by the transitive property, 3 must equal 5. The transitive property allows you to connect many things that are equal to say the very first thing in the equals must equal the last thing in the equals. By now you should be getting the hang of these new words, alternating exterior. Now you know what to expect from the word exterior. That would mean you're on the outside of the parallel lines. These are exterior out in here. So if we were to try and talk about alternating and exterior, I think you know where they would be. This is on the exterior and alternating and in the exterior would be this one. These are alternates and exteriors. This is an alternate and exterior pair, 2 and 8 as well. Just like the last one, let's talk about its relationship. Uh, will they be equal? Are they supplements? What is the relationship involved uh, in solving this? It's a very similar logical argument. 2 corresponds to 6. Those must be equal. 6 is equal to 8 vertical angles. Using the transitive property, that makes 8 equal to 6, 6 equal to 2, therefore 2 is equal to, uh, is equal to 8. And so we would know those are the same using transitive. So these guys are always equal. They are always equal. Very important, helpful things. Let's look at the new language. Same side. It doesn't say alternate anymore. And some books or some groups call it consecutive interior. Now you know what interior means. And you know what same side is. So actually, we're going to say this and this are um, on the same side and in the interior. Now I've used different colors partly because I want to be careful. First of all, do they look equal? Nope. So they're, well, that's not why they're not equal, but definitely they don't look equal. Let's think about this for a minute. What is their relationship then if they're, if they're not equal? Well, we know that 3 is the same as 7. We know that. So then, oh, I see the relationship. That must mean that 3 and 6 are supplements, right? So they must be uh, equal to 180 together because uh, 3 and 7, and that's kind of the formal proof or informal proof of it, is that 6 and 7 make 180 and 3 is the same as 7, so they are supplements. These are not equal to each other, but they add up to 180 together. All right, last one of the video. Same side, consecutive exterior. And you know what that means. They have to be on the same side of the transversal, and they have to both be in the exterior. So that would be like angle 2 and angle 7. Now, I use different colors because they're not equal to each other. So again, the logic might look like this. 2 is the same as 6, isn't it? That's definitely true. And like we did in the last one, 6 and 7 together add to 180. So if you're on the same side and exterior, you actually are not equal, but you add to 180. I don't know if you've caught this, but 
uh, and I need you to catch it, I guess, is that because of the nature of those corresponding angles that we started with, ultimately there are only really two relationships in this whole simple diagram. Um, you are either equal to each other um, or you add to 180 with the other. And, and there are many varieties of you know, uh, iterations of those relationships and new names, but there they all are. So let's do a quick summary. Vertical angles, that would be like 5 and 7. It would be like 4 and 2. And we know that that means they are equal or congruent. A lines pair or linear pair means that they are together on a line segment like this. We know that that ultimately means then that they are a supplement or they add to 180. I don't have a picture of complement, but we know that that means that they add to 90. Um, supplement, we know by definition that can be a linear pair, but also it just means it adds up to 180. Corresponding, let's go back to the diagram. To correspond means that you slide down the transversal, and we learn that uh, that ultimately means that you are equal or congruent. Alternating and in the interior would be like 4 and 6 would be one example of that. And so to uh, 4 and 6, we learned, would have been equal to each other. Alternate exterior would mean that they're alternating and on the exterior. We found out that those are also uh, equal in their relationship. Next were same side and in the interior. And we found out that those indeed were supplements, and the argument was this idea here. And so we would say that they add to 180 as a final result. And finally, same side and on the exterior, we found out that they are also supplement. And the reason for that is that we would know that this little angle 5 would be the same as 1, and so ultimately that would, in the same way, say that they're supplement. This little chart is really important for, the, for lots of problems in the future.